I'd like to begin my remarks tonight thanking Bill and my colleagues at the University of Maryland for such a lovely night. It feels like a long time since we were in the habit of coming together. However, this campaign milestone is simply too important to let pass without a proper celebration. I want to congratulate the campaign committee for helping us meet these goals prior to the end of the official campaign. That's a really big deal. In addition, please let me extend my thanks to a few of my Maryland colleagues who have worked with you to reach this goal. You've heard their names before, uh, but I'd like to list them again. Don Linebaugh, Brian Kelly, Leah Droll, and Erica Belzer. Thank you. Many of the people that I've met in the last 65 days have said they would not have been able to pursue their education without the support that they received, and they continue to be grateful some 50 years later for these gifts and so they pay it forward for future generations of students. These former students work hard. They work hard at school and they work even harder as professionals. They built practices, rose up the ranks of companies and government institutions, assumed risk, and when they hit a bump, they kept working. These former students are smart, they're agile, and they're resilient, but they never forget where they came from. Because of this, our former students give back. They provide mentorship, internships, and often serve on our faculty. These friends of our programs give time and resources and connection to other opportunities. Because of them, our graduate and undergraduate students can study with less interruptions caused by financial need. Our students can study abroad in places they learn about in their classrooms. The impact of this giving is manifest in our recruitment and retention rates. Our students complete their degrees in timely fashions. It can be seen in the high and prestigious placements of our graduating students, but we see it most in long-term commitment of our former students in giving back. They give back because each of you has set an example of the power of paying it forward. As someone who benefited from the generosity as a student, I can attest to the fact that gifts like yours make dreams come true. It's my pleasure to work in partnership with you to identify the ways that we can work together to bring more dreams to life. In the next few minutes, I'd like to talk with you about these dreams in response to a question that the provost put before the Board of Trustees. She asked, Ten years from now, there is a headline about the University of Maryland School of Architecture, Planning, and Preservation in the Washington Post. What does it say? I'll give you three headlines. Headline one, the University of Maryland School of Architecture, Planning, and Preservation leads the nation in creating pathways for women and minorities entering the design professions. Those in industry are asking for our direct partnership in diversifying those entering the built environment professions. Our professional organizations are emphasizing initiatives beginning with programs in kindergarten that will bring awareness of our professions to those who may have never met an architect, planner, preservation, real estate developer. We seek to lead this effort by working on and off campus to create new opportunities for young people to discover us. My goal is that we will partner with each of you to transform the composition of professionals in the region so that the professionals of the future look like all the communities and constituencies they serve. Headline two, the University of Maryland School of Architecture, Planning and Preservation is a national model for community engaged research. Through our research centers and our studio projects, our school intentionally serves low resourced communities across the state. We work with governmental and non-governmental organizations to help the needs of all stakeholders, especially those who do not have the resources to build sustainable, resilient, and just communities. The National Center for Smart Growth, the Environmental Finance Center, and the Colvin Institute serve as central points in the college for these activities. They work hard with limited allocations from the state, the university, and their partners to touch as many people as possible. Their impact is already significant. I seek to help amplify their work by cultivating an endowment that ensures that this work can grow in new ways, enhancing sustainability, fairness, and justice in Maryland communities. 
This work is not only good for the communities, but it's good for us. It gives us and our students the chance to test their ideas in ways that are locally impactful. It is critical for all of our development together. And finally, headline three, President Pines cuts the ribbon on state-of-the-art facilities for the University of Maryland School of the Built Environment. When Craig asked me to dream big, I said without hesitation, we need a new building, we need an addition. Deans are programmed to say this. It is in our DNA, and no provost is ever surprised to hear the words come out of our mouth. Our beloved architecture building has a heart, it has character, it has stories and history, uh, but there's simply not enough of it. It has not kept pace with the growth of the student, faculty, and staff population. Our students do not have places to come together beyond the studio and the library. Many of our courses are actually offered in other places on campus. Our staff are jammed into spaces which are particularly problematic given the new world of COVID. And we're running out of faculty offices. Our research enterprise is housed in Prinkert. How many of you have been in Prinkert Hall? <laughs> it used to be the gymnasium and the swimming pool is still in the basement and the tap dance studio is still on the top floor. It is not ideal and it is on the university's teardown list. So eventually we're going to have to find a new space anyway. I'm looking forward to our partners in finding out what this new space looks like. Because it's not just about space, it's about the future of education. What does education in the design professions look like in the next 10, 20, 50 years? And that's the conversation that we'll be having and having with you as we plan for this third headline. I believe our future is very bright, thanks to the talented faculty, staff, and students, both current and former. My goal is that the stories you hear about us will flow in a steady, continuous stream, growing the magnitude of the impact. So there's no question about why we continue to lead the nation in the three headlines that we've offered. So from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you for enticing me to Maryland. There has not been a day in the last three months that I regretted the move. It's an exciting time. You are all extremely gracious. And the power of the University of Maryland is clear. The School of the Built Environment has deep roots all over the region and in our communities. What I hope to do is to take your stories and, and your energy and amplify it. That's how I see my job as dean. I'm your megaphone. And I hope someday you'll pick up that megaphone with me and help me continue to shout out the virtues of our great school, because it is that important that we do this journey together. Thank you for tonight.